guys, welcome back to Clockwork Dandy Needles for another breakdown of Vinland Saga Season 2, Episode 18. Before we get going, do make sure you guys are subscribed. I have compiled my list for the midways if you are new to the channel. Hopefully this week I'm going to have my midway review with you guys where I'm crowning top 3 OPs, EDs and current standing animes. It gives me a chance to talk about this season as a whole. Get all of you guys together because at the moment you're kind of split over two videos. So I get you all together, discuss my thoughts on the season at the moment and tell you what I'm enjoying we generally have a good old time but thank you guys again for tuning in this is going to be a heavier video i had notes and then the episode decided to do what it did at the end maybe run off the script a little bit lighter just because it's a hard watch i won't lie it's been a while since an anime's maybe kind of want to turn away but the problem is i have to read the subs so i have to look it's a very brutal episode i thought last week was hard to stomach this week was worse i did technically have a small spoiler i was mooching around trying to get some content for my midway because hint hint vinland saga's on there somewhere and then somebody did say that this week was going to be probably the heavier week that was it it wasn't really a spoiler on why it was going to be worse it was just a heads up this week doesn't get any better i've become complacent with the farmland stuff i'm like oh yeah no this isn't vinland saga i can't remember how brutal the first season was it does feel like it was a lifetime ago that i remember the first season and how brutal it really was i'm reminded i'm definitely reminded of vinland saga has reminded me that it's not an anime that really plays around and it's not covering things lightly. It's going to go straight into the darker topics. A few times where I think Mappa's made the correct choice of not showing the full thing. I don't know if in the manga full things have been shown. The first one was when Arnaid's child is killed off screen. I don't know if that is fully described in the manga, but they decided to cut away, which I'm grateful for. This episode in particular, they they did cut away, but it didn't really help. You knew exactly what was going on. You saw the state she was in at the end the brutality of the sequence it's not hindered it's a very brutal sequence sometimes you hit difficult episodes that you don't know how to break down and this is definitely one of those tune in with Canute for a little bit I have to say after this week's episode I'm on fully on team Canute I don't know Canute just do your thing um he did state that he would show no mercy if they didn't submit to him does make me wonder if Canute would show mercy if they just turned around and said hey okay take the farm I just get the feeling that he wouldn't I don't know why Iron Fist legend is floating to Canute's ears but it's interesting to see that Canute doesn't fully back it I don't know whether he can see through Katil but he doesn't believe that Katil is the same person in the legend. Katil wasn't last week, he is going to be this week because I think he's gone off the diving board to the point where Iron Fist Katil is going to meet Canute out on the battlefield. It's kind of want to back Canute by this point. Any shred of wanting to redeem Katil, but obviously he's an irredeemable character. It's gone guys, don't worry. You guys are manga readers. You knew what was going to happen. You knew what he got up to. I didn't. A small part of me was hoping that he'd be that one person who would break the cycle and be a good person. But slave owner is going to be a slave owner. Two to three days behind Katil. Everybody getting rallied up. It's interesting to see that Forgill doesn't tell people who's coming. He just says there's a war coming. He doesn't tell people who is coming. Because you imagine what people might think if they realised they were up against the king. He's doing that on purpose because I, I think some of those retainers don't have to technically fight. They live there and technically retain are free they're not slaves but they don't actually have to fight so maybe he pays them i know the security guys do have to there's obviously people living on the farm as well who aren't in the service so i don't quite know how that's going to work out whether they just have to fight regardless but at the same time there's going to be people on that farm who don't want to fight their king interesting to see how they deal with this and whether people can just be like look i'm surrendering i'm not going to be fighting you that's down to whether canute feels merciful or not whether he's going to spare people i don't see what he would gain from just killing absolutely everybody there would be people there who would maybe be on his side but we're going to have to see what kind of king he's planning to be because he's definitely showing us that he's not one to be messed around with something about this next chunk gave me the feeling it was all going to be bad i know during the sequence we're forfeiting and I know when they're discussing Arnheide and the fact it's going to be okay, it's going to be okay. Big part of me started to go, actually, no, the anime is really trying to hammer down that things are going to be fine. It did seem to be pandering to the idea, of, hey, hey, it's going to be okay, it's fine. All these characters are telling you it's going to be fine and plant the seed that things are going to be okay. But it seemed a bit heavy. It would be ironic if it was the complete opposite. A small part of me even wondered if he would kill her. 
It was only at the back of my brain up until last week. I kind of had hopes that Katil was better. I wanted him to be better. A small part of me wants him to be better. And I was like, there's no way he'd kill her, right? This kind of anime makes me think about things and then realise that maybe I'm on the wrong page. I don't want Arnhide to suffer. And I realised up until last week that I'd actually been saying her name wrong. I kept saying Arnhide, but it's actually Arnhide. I feel bad for saying it wrong. So I am correcting my mistake, hopefully, this week. At the same time, we do see that the fortress that we're going to be protecting the farm with is a complete mess consensus already is that it doesn't matter who it is there's no way we can win we've lost some fighters there's barely anybody decent on a farmer who can fight fourth is your best fighter but at this point he has absolutely no reason to fight for anybody even if snake was to be like dude i want you to fight he wouldn't i don't want fourth in fighting this battle i actually want the fact that he's now met leaf i want him to go out i want him to get out of there i don't know if that's gonna happen because i think part of fourth in is gonna want to stay and help people or try and find a middle ground which I don't know if it's always possible. The talk with Thorfinn and Ina, they do put forward the idea that maybe there is something before hitting violence. Violence should be that last resort. And what I think Thorfinn is trying to find is the idea of communication, words, essentially talking. In the situation with Snake, I don't believe Snake listened. He did try to reason with him. They did say, you know, look over this, have my farm. You know, they tried to bribe him. They did try to talk. And the value of communication at this point is that it didn't work out. There are some situations, I guess, even talking isn't enough. Snake wanted retribution for his friends' lives, whilst the others were obviously wanting to have a happy ending. They wanted to get him out of there. I don't know if that could have been handled better. And it's sad to see that Thorfinn is beating himself up. Could I have done something better? Did I consider all the options? I guess that's what makes Thorfinn a very interesting character, that he considers all of these things is a bit like me when I'm breaking this down with you guys giving you my rough thoughts four things also breaking down the things going on around him my big worry this week was that Katil wasn't gonna let four and Nina go if he'd have found out exactly who it was I don't think they've given him the names Leaf actually did get to meet four he's bought both Ina and four which that is your happy ending the only grain of happiness in this episode because I really wanted nothing more than Ina and four to get out of there I just wanted them to get away now it seemed like a good time to get off the farm things weren't going good Canute was incoming anyway I don't want them mixed up in the fight but at the same time I feel we are going to be mixed up in a fight maybe they're not going to get out in time because he is only three days away so it's a possibility he's going to arrive and they're still going to be there on the farm it does do a lot of meta thinking outside the box obviously Thorfinn is a very progressive character for this period of time I don't know if pacifists exist at that period of time I don't know enough about the period of time. I keep saying that I'm going to do some research on the Viking period in general. I just never get the time to do it. It was an interesting sequence. I think this is the sequence in I really liked was just them discussing if things can be handled better, what could have gone differently. So they also start to talk about Arnheid. It's going to be okay. Maybe he'll be sparing on her. The more you talk about it being okay, the more I'm starting to less think it's going to be okay because it's an anime. They like to do rug pulls. They're going to make you think it's okay. I'm definitely going to be traumatised for a little while after this week's episode. I found last week's episode difficult. It took a few days to get it off my brain. I was just worried. At one point, I thought Snake was dead. It came across in the comments when I was talking to you guys that I had presumed Snake had lived and I had no basis for this. But, you know, Snake is alive. I know he's a grey character. I find him very interesting. I find him quite similar, in a sense, to Thorfinn back in in the old days and i am a little bit gutted because you guys did state that they had planned to give us snake content on his backstory but it's not gonna happen now i get it i think it would have padded out the season too much i also don't think he initially had it in the manga anyways i do hope they give us that snake content in an ova i would like to see it because he's a very interesting character and you're telling me that he's lived, led a disgusting life now he's here on the farm what has led him to get to the farm you know what has led somebody like that it sounds like they've come quite far if you're looking at a modern day map i also I apologize for getting Istanbul Turkey fact wrong. I basically did a very quick Google, saw where it was roughly, and then didn't even consider the fact that Turkey wasn't a country off at that point. If a OVA does come out, I will be breaking that one down on the channel. You can bet that. Leif Erikson, he is just such an OG character. He's a character that I've been wanting for a very long time to meet up with Thorfinn. And it's sad because he was so close at the end of season one, but Thorfinn just wasn't having any of it. And then he attacked the king, somehow turned into a slave. There's a little bit on that. I don't understand how he became a slave whether they just kind of went hey you've attacked Knut's face we're just gonna sell you off it's sad when you consider how close he was to running away back to home with Leaf. he's the OG he has bought Ina 
and fourth in, which I'm so happy about. He even went out of his way to say, I'll just take her on hate. It's okay, I will take her if you don't want her. He's not gonna let her go, even after this, because he was happy to just take her and it could have been ended right there and then. This is Vinland Saga. There's a reason why it is up there with Berserk for being one of those depressing animes. This week is depressing. I didn't really want to say too much about this next sequence. Don't really want to talk about too much, guys. It's, it's brutal, it's heartbreaking, it's just horrible. It's the kind of anime it is. I take it on when it comes to breaking this anime down. As much as I love Vinland Saga, I don't like everything in Vinland Saga. There was even scenes in the first season that I struggled to watch. I think one of them was when they massacred the family. That I found really hard to watch. I think they killed somebody very close to Canute and I found that a little bit hard to watch as well. There are little moments and this is going to be up there. Last week was sad to watch. This week was really difficult to watch. And because I had to read subtitles, there's no real turning away from it. I'm a sub girl all the way. I don't don't like having English dubs. They don't feel right. Uh, there's only a few animes I've watched in English because I joined late or they were my gateway entry animes. But with this, I had to read the subtitles. There was no turning away. That's when I went, oh, you know what, screw it. Canute, come along, do your thing. I just want Canute now to just deliver a beat down to Katil. I'm done with this. He could have been a savable character if he just let everyone go and try to redeem himself. Snake's appearance was a huge relief, but it didn't make anything any better. But I am thankful he was there. He's a guilty pleasure that I like Snake and I probably shouldn't like Snake, but I do find him a very interesting character that I just want to know a lot about. He does stop him going too far, but I don't know if he got there too late because it does sound like Arnhead may not actually make it. A small part of me, as bad as it sounds, is hoping that she does crosses over, she's freed from her life of a slave, and she gets to go and meet her son and Gadir in the afterlife. I feel bad saying that. It's an anime that makes me even go, wait, am I am I a bad person for thinking this? Canute versus Katil, I am backing Canute all the way. The only shining silver lining was that Leif Erikson and Thorfinn reunited, overshadowed completely by the brutality of the sequence. By that point, my excitement had gone. I was really excited for them to meet, but then I just completely forgot that you know, hey, look, they're together in the scene. At least Leaf has found what he's looking for. Hopefully there's going to be a, a talk between the two at some point. It's a difficult episode. I probably need to now go and find something very happy to watch. But thank you guys so much. Do make sure you keep your eyes peeled this week. I've got a busy week, but I'm going to try and have the midway review some point this week. You guys can see where Vinland Saga is. Bear in mind, I'm crowning three different things. Is it going to be on any of those lists? I gave you a hint that I was finding material for it, which means you guys know it's on a list but you don't know how many lists and you don't know where tune in guys thank you so much and i really hope you guys now take a bit of time out it's a heavy episode go and treat yourselves go look at something fun have a good day guys bye bye